Wang Wood, who is being recognized as one of the last artists. Dahil had po tayo, ay pwedeng maging isang bayan sa ating saling paraan. Beautiful ako sa kung ano ako, oh, sa kung oh. ano yung meron ako. We were able to give about a thousand bicycles to 10 cities in Metro Manila. The Iron Lady of Asia, ganito nakilala si Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago noong nabubuhay pa siya. The winner of Asia's next top model is Maureen! Which is the Heroes. This is our podcast that features strong women and engages in conversations to empower you. Join me as we hear from Shiro's all over the world, share their stories and becoming the women they are today. We hope their stories can help inspire you to find your inner Shiro. This is Pauline Lopez and welcome to Shiro Talk. In today's episode, we feature a woman who once carved her name in the world of volleyball. Now the free ball, running attack, Gretchen Ho again, again in the middle, goes to the running attack of Gretchen Ho, it is almost unstoppable. Being part of the Fab Five who brought Ateneo to their first back-to-back -back UAP finals, she continues to dominate the world of sports, only this time, being in front of the lens as a television presenter, covering important events such as the Tokyo Olympics. That we are live from the International Broadcasting Center here in Tokyo, where thousands of broadcasters and media personnel from all over the world have gathered to bring you the biggest sporting event in the world. Always a woman in action, her continuous hard work and transitioning from one move to the next allows her to pursue passions that are not only beyond her comfort zone, but to serve a purpose in her life that is beyond the court. Listen to this episode now and find out on what makes her a Shiro. Let us welcome Gretchen Ho. Hi Gretchen, thank you so much for being here with us today on Shiro Talk. I'm so touched to be here with you. Of course, after uh, interviewing you, for the Olympic qualifiers. It's such an honor to be on your channel, to be your guest this time. It's a pleasure also to take off the, the host hat <laughs> and be a guest. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I definitely want to get to know more about you the same way you've gotten to know about me. So let's start with what are the key differences or the transition like from being the phenom you are, a student athlete, to the woman in action? So it was a really long journey getting from being a volleyball player to being a host, and uh, and, and anyway, I've had I've had to go through a lot. Um, probably like what you're doing now started off um, just you know dabbling in hosting, trying out different roles, hosting different events, speaking for different engagements. So this is me on TV Patrol. I do features. I'm a contributing reporter. But before all of this, I was a volleyball player for 12 years. I transitioned from this girl <laughs> on the right to this girl right here in a span of five years. Tapos, kinuha ko ng ABS-CBN to host a sports show called Game Day Weekend. And that's where I really started. I remember being super awkward, being super stiff, and I hated watching myself as in. Pero just like any athlete, I think you have to, you know, watch your tape. <laughs> you have to see yourself if you want to improve and kailangan tiisin mo yung proseso na yun eh, to, to be better. So eventually, you know, um, I just kept on watching and watching myself in different uh, engagements and I would always point out, parang ito ayo ko to, ito gusto ko to. Okay, ah, uh, dito type isuot ko. The next time, let's do this, let's try this. So it was um a whole lot of experimentation and finding myself in between. And now I can say that um, apart from uh, hosting, I'm also doing the news, and I feel so much more confident 
performing and being in front of the camera. So, and dami, dami ko pinagdaanan medyo parang eight years din yata yun ng tinagal nung, uh, nung proseso na yun. <laughs> well, from that, now you're talking about the process. What is a core value or something that you picked up from playing sports that's still with you today? Hmm, I think being open to learning, being open to other people's feedback and advice helped me a lot. Um, when you're an athlete, you always look for a coach. You always look for somebody to guide you, to let you know how you're doing and what you can do better, what you did right, what you did wrong. Our coach used to say, when you go to a practice, you have to have a goal in mind and there must be something that you want to improve on. I would actively search for that, uh, for mentors, for you know, my producers to give me feedback after each show. And yung open-mindedness to correction is something that I carried with me from being an athlete. Parang, ano eh, hindi ako sanay na walang nagsasabi sa akin, okay, ganito yung performance mo, ito pa yung kailangan mong gawin. Kaya, nagtatanong like, talaga ako, oh, kamusta yun? Kamusta yung performance ko? Okay ba ako? O stiff ba? O ano, okay lang ba sinabi ko to? Tinanong ko to. So, you know, um, I, I, the one thing I hate most is silence. Uh, after, diba? Diba? After each performance, parang hindi mo alam eh, kaka, parang in second guess mo sarili mo. So I would, you know, be super straightforward with it. Um, did I suck? Did I do well? Mga <laughs> yeah, I get it. No, definitely. That's how the people here are helping with. So thank you for sharing that. I'll definitely keep that with me. Now, you're talking about the transition. Um, as athletes, and I'm still going through this process myself, as athletes, we were actually trained to do our workouts with our teams, with our teammates, because there's this end goal, to be the best version of yourself on the court, in the ring. But this time, as I see you on social media, you are so active, so fit, so strong. I see it. So I just want to ask, what motivates you until today to remain this um, resume that you go through? Uh, you know what? It's It wasn't easy for me to carry on the discipline from, you know, ha uh, being part of a team and having a set schedule with, you know, teammates, coaches to train with. And now I'm on my own. You have to do everything on your own. So switching from that was a big transition for me. But I think the number one thing that motivates me is I really want to be fit so I can be confident in what I do. Uh, when I do pictorials, when I do hosting in front of the camera, when I you know take photos for social media, I really do it for my own self. So I feel good about myself and I feel like I'm in the best position to do my job. I guess, ano, parang yung standard ko para sa sarili ko, when it comes to fitness and conditioning is I would be confident enough if I know that my level of physical conditioning is a, a level where I can come back to volleyball anytime that I want to. Mm -hmm. So um, last before pandemic, I would play games with my teammates. We would I would join them for training. Tapos we would play games sa uh, different leagues na hindi official. Just to keep ourselves in shape, um, thinking ko siya, syempre, volleyball player ko, tapos nakikita ko yung batchmates ko naglalaro pa. Parang, di ba, parang minsan, teka, kayo ko pa yan eh. So, uh, more, than, for, yeah, yeah. more than, yeah, uh, more than other people, it's proving to yourself na kaya mo pa. Um, and I, I try to keep it at that level. So, I cycle, I run, I do weights, and um, I, I keep active para hindi nawawala yon. Tapos, Parang nasanay na yata yung katawan ko na feeling ko mas fit pa ako kaysa noon. Alam mo yung gano'n? Yung, I know, I don't wala na yung baby fats. Although, syempre na payat na ako ngayon, di ba? Hindi na ako maskulado. Pero nawala na yung baby fats. Mas alam ko na yung katawan ko. Mas kabisado ko na. Um, a lot of self-care, I think, and confidence and self-love plays into it. I looked straight into the mirror. I looked straight into my eyes. And I started telling myself that I love myself. I think the best person to love you is you. No, I definitely get what you mean. But sometimes my family members, they don't even want to train with me or work out with me because it's I want to sweat all the time. Like, I want to be tough all the time. Keep so, that. Keep that discipline. Huh? 
Oh, oh. I know. But um, now that we're talking about sports, I definitely want to talk to you about your Olympic experience covering our athletes and your whole experience. I mean, I've messaged you um, every time you shared something. I was living through your stories vicariously. It was so fun to watch that. So how was your whole experience? Can you take us how your day was like? It was such a privilege to be able to do that for people. Um, I felt like a sense of responsibility and purpose, making sure that our athletes had enough and good coverage mm -hmm. as an athlete myself and, and turning into broadcasting. Parang alam ko yung feeling na ano eh, na yung journey mo parang kung wari hindi na document or hindi na ikwento ng maayos. Parang you don't do justice to the athlete eh. So that's why I guess I was so passionate about it. Diba parang kasama dun yung, yung roller coaster ride, yung highs and lows, yung frustration, disappointment, to the leading up to the win. That's all important. So uh, that's why I kept on posting on my social and not just that, but on TV where we were really going to be reporting for, for Signal. Complement na lang yung social, but in today's age, it has to be both eh. Yeah. That's both digital and TV. So how was our day like? Um, it was a combination of... Uh, updating people online so you break the news first you watch the games you have to you know keep your eyes open your ears your ears you know in tune you have to listen you have to be mindful of every single thing that's happening because it's not just about the athlete it's also about the whole context of being in a pandemic sino yung mga kalaban niya ano ginagawa niya eh, di ba parang kamusta yung weather all of that eh um you you situate the athlete in all of that and it makes makes for uh, in the for the story tapos after noon pagkatapos ng mag-update sa social interviewin namin sila tapos after noon bubuuhin na namin yung pakete for TV um, they, they they would call us for updates for TV also and then sa gabi may newscast kami na dalawa pwede pang umabot ng apat depende sa updates and then your social media, syempre, you know, we would take photos, videos, everything, lahat ng material na pwede namin kunin. Um, it was, a th I, I think, a 360 kind of coverage for me and Paolo. Del Rosario. <laughs> I, I remember, it, you guys, your guys were like working 24-7. I mean, it was yeah, constant news. Every single day. Oh, oh no. Grab it. But now that now I want to ask you in your own perspective, because we've been hearing the stories of athletes, but what was your key takeaway, your lesson that you learned along the way, especially because it, it was uncharted territory. You, you were having the Olympics in this time. So what was that thing that you still keep with you today? Doing it in the middle of pandemic was very special. But I think the Olympics itself is a different level and a different field of play. I got to appreciate it even more. Yung ano, yung learning ko noon, yung sa athletes natin, it's so different from winning a world championship when you're competing in a world championship as compared to the Olympics. Parang ibang level yung ano eh, yung pressure, yung stage. It's so big of a stage. Um, and doing it in the middle of a pandemic, even I think magnified that it requires a lot of mental toughness. But I also learned that the Olympics is not a one-time event, one-time thing. It's a journey. So if you take a look at Heidi Lin's win, she won the gold in her fourth Olympic appearance. And I think that's how we should look at it. Na di porket natalo okay okay na yon di ba parang nakapag-participate na siya sa Olympics syempre masaya tayo di ba proud naman tayo kung makarating sa ganung level but you know let's be patient also because i i really believe that come paris yung mas marami pa tayong mapapanalunan and we have very strong chances and i hope to see you there <laughs> i hope so too that'd be amazing i mean you did talk about hitlin were you physically there when you know she was on the podium and we heard? Yes, we were oh, there oh, and I interviewed her. I got to interview her oh, right after. Goodness. How was it? How was the whole experience actually hearing our national anthem? You know, placing our hand on our heart. How was that? Very emotional. 
uh, Pauline, super emotional. Like, iba, iba, iba yung feeling. Uh, goosebumps moment. Kasi yung moment na yun, you know, you never thought you'd see it in your lifetime. You always dream about it. It's like the super big dream for the Philippines and for it to happen right before you. Parang, wow. Um, is this really happening? Is this, you know, tsaka sobrang proud. I think, ano eh, yung, yung sa, sa self-confidence natin as a nation, what that goal did to us um, cannot be replaced by any financial incentive or just, you know, by the mere mention na nanalo ko sa isang competition. Hindi, it's more of kaya natin mga Pinoy. It's priceless. I mean, Looking back at everything, I feel like even my friends from the U.S. and different countries, when they heard that happen, it's just so inspiring, especially the first gold coming from a woman in weightlifting. I mean, how did you feel about that? How did, I mean, looking back at it all, it's so empowering. I mean, what were your thoughts? It's great that a female, a woman won the gold, the first ever gold. It's so empowering for all Pinays out there, for you, for me, for you know all the young girls who want to pursue a sport. And it doesn't matter if the sport seems boyish. I didn't want it with weightlifting, di ba? Parang sobrang strong ng message na yun. Nakaka-proud, nakaka-proud. And you know what I loved about the way she fought in the competition was she was also so emotional like a, like a true filipino bawat lift niya they were like cheer siya parang woo gumaganon siya tapos parang yung mga kalaban niya dead ma nr walang emotion <laughs> tapos siya yung woo woo pero pinoy na pinoy talaga tapos di ba pinakita niya yun sa ganung stage na wow you stay true to yourself it doesn't matter what other people thought you just live the moment enjoy it Uh, last ba niya na Olympics yun, di natin alam. Pero, mananalo ba siya ng gold? Di rin alam. Basta, you know, she was there, to, out there to have fun, do her best, and have confidence in herself. Oh, that is so amazing. I mean, hoping in 2024 we'll be there together as me as a competitor and you covering again. So, I'm going yeah! my fingers for that. <laughs> I, am, we are. I mean, so now... I know you've utilized your power in storytelling. I mean, you have such a strong voice. Now, I want to ask you yourself, from when you were a little girl, um, did you always envision this, that you would have this responsibility for our people to hear the, these eye-opening stories? Oh my, never, never, never in my, never in my lifetime did I imagine I would end up in such a career because when I grew up, I was either wanted to go corporate or public service. When I say public service, it could be an NGO, joining like Gawad Kalinga, Habitat for Humanity, hindi ko alam what's out there, or a multinational company and doing their CSR. Yung mga ganun ang iniisip ko, sobrang layo talaga from broadcast. And I think where I ended up, years later is quite close to that but in a different way i still do public service being in the news um having the my own platform using it for young women in action we that's my advocacy arm and i get to tell stories and live out um, being an athlete still through other people i feel like it's also my responsibility to turn the spotlight on other people whose stories need to be told Just seeing people tell stories and share their light can be so empowering. And the best part of it is I can relate to it so much and I know the value of bringing exposure to our athletes and how much it can make their life better, how resources will come when they have proper expo- exposure. Sobrang parang thank you Lord, dinala mo ako dito kasi napakaswerte ko na Tama yung timing, tama yung daan, lahat na tutunan ko bago ko dumating dun sa mga opportunity na yon. And I still have a lot to learn. Super, ang dami pa talaga. And I want to, you know, be better, to grow better. And I'm just grateful that I get the privilege to be uh, in the front row of, of those competitions. Oh, wow. I find that. I didn't even know that. So thank you for sharing that. See, I'm getting to know a little bit more about you. 
You did this campaign, Donate a Bike, Save a Job campaign. What was your inspiration behind that to do that purposeful service? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I, I really felt moved to do something in the pandemic to help out. Parang I wasn't okay with just staying at home and having a comfortable life. 